Hi, this is Ron Shira, and we are at Gallery 908 for the benefit exhibit of Lorraine Mellor. Uh, Lorraine is uh, one of the tragedies of the art world. Around here, she has um, died of cancer recently, and in Gallery 908, they are having a benefit for her, uh, which the uh, artworks are being presented on the internet. And, um, going to be sold online at auction. And this is Amanda Condict and she's the, uh, uh, the curator or the uh, organizer, it might be a better word for this exhibit. And um, Amanda has been a longtime friend of Lorraine's uh, through the course of her life. And um, she has uh, put together uh, uh, exactly, um, I guess to be more precisely, she has been the execu executrix of the uh, estate and has put together all of the work Actually, here. Actually, Lori yeah. McLaren, our other friend, too, we're co-executrix. Okay. I don't want to leave her out. She's just not here tonight. Oh, okay. Lori McLaren. McLaren. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so would you like to talk a little bit about the work in here or talk about Lorraine? Um, or? Well, Lorraine was a very unique person. Lorraine... Um, was from England, born in England. She was a textile designer. Um, knitwear was her big forte when she was in New York for years. She was a high-powered businesswoman, successful, did a lot of wonderful things in her life, um, married a little bit late in life and had a son, and um, moved to the country. And um, that's when I met her, because her son and my boys were in school together. Mm -hmm. And um, she maybe only in the last 10 years of her life, began to really get serious about fine arts. Mm -hmm. Before that, she was very, you know, involved in her business. And for as tough as she was and successful and dynamic and high-powered, she had like a, something deep in her core that needed to be validated or mm -hmm. accepted. And mm -hmm. she went through a really, really rough spell in her life when um, she was hit with... Her mother nearly died of a stroke, her husband left her for another woman, her son wanted to quit school, and then she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And as we all know, um, ovarian cancer um, is a very deadly cancer, usually because it's caught so late that it's pretty progressed. Hers was stage 3C, I think 4 is um, the most that it goes. Um, and I, at that point, she felt that she needed to, her life needed to mean something more than ever before. And she just began painting and working on Fast and Furious. I mean, she was obsessed with it. That's all she did. And a lot of it was therapy, working her way through the divorce, through the illness. Um, you know, she was in remission twice, the second time only for a very short period of time. And especially after the second remission, she was in a lot of pain. And this was her salvation. It was her way of staying alive. As long as her work was alive, she was alive. You know, if you, you can see the progression in her work. Like, I know it because I'm familiar with her. We've been such close friends for so many years. In the beginning, she had, you know, tapestries, like over here. And even the things that weren't actual textiles was a lot of multi, you know, mixed media with textiles in them, like sewing machine stitching. And um, there's bits and fragments of watercolor that she cut and collaged onto here. And then she sewed twigs. And some of them, there's beads sewn in by hand. Um, so that was like her earlier works. You know, it went from regular straight textiles to like textiles integrated with painting. And um, you can tell she was a, a fabric designer. Some of her pieces are about pattern and about, and in, in, early, in her early works before she was ill, it was much more flowing lines that were, um, I don't know, more buoyant. I don't know how to describe them. Even when they were burnt like this. You know, this is dated 1998, which was... Um, well, long before she was ill. She wasn't diagnosed until maybe 2002. Um, but even with the burnt marks, it's still a very flowing, graceful pattern. Very um, uplifting, I think. But she, she, well, of course, she burned them in a, deliberately in yes. a way. Yeah. Yes, yes. She always had candles in her studio. Mm -hmm. then, you know, since she went on to like, painting, first was watercolors. She painted with watercolors. She had done watercolor painting at Leeds in England when she went to college. You know, mm -hmm. With the textile design, they used watercolor, so she was comfortable with watercolor. And you know, she started with the watercolor and, and like experimenting with you know, salt and saran wrap on the paper and that sort of thing. And then she felt she wanted to go to canvas um, because, well, for one reason, because she said she hates like matting and framing all these watercolor pieces. And something on canvas you could just put out there without yeah. getting the glass. 
I totally agree with that. I'm not very really yeah. much of a fan of, uh, of framing myself. And the once you started on the canvas with acrylics, it got more and more 3D with more and more texture. Mm -hmm. um, you know, here there's eggshells in the here. Um, she used a lot of you know, the regular modeling paste and all, but she also used like leaves, eggshells, string, um, burlap, whatever it would give it like a great texture. And layer on top of layer and scraping away. And now these, this actually was done during the time she was doing what was, um, ended up being in the Healing Series show, which was what um, Peg and, and uh, Glenn had that traveling show. She was, you know, in response to healing. Mm -hmm. And this, I believe, was a part of that series. Most of that series her son kept. But there are a few around here, there are studies for that series. Mm -hmm. that, um, you know, parts of them that went into that series, um, I don't know exactly where they are. The ones you see with the figures in them. Um, yeah, here's one of them. This was a, a study for one of her healing series paintings. The nudes are from a time period when her and I would go over to the institute and wind missing and go to the life drawing. She wanted more practice drawing and she used pastels. And so almost all of the nudes started out as a, as a quick sketch pastel over there in the workshops. And then she'd bring them home and she'd paint on top of them or collage papers on them and, um, and make them you know, even more elaborate and interesting. Model, but the money wasn't there. Then, like, like this, for instance, was one she had done in the workshop, and then this was a painting that she created from it. And this, I think, too, became a part of her in response to healing series. That one was titled Alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very um, sensitive work here. A lot of the female figure, too, so they're almost self-referential. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of them, yeah, they, they came up with nudes that were, you know, regular pose nudes in the, in the life drawing workshops but she ended up turning them into you know, symbols of herself and the things that she was going through. Mm -hmm. This is very much reminds me of a, based on a fabric pattern. This is one of her earlier watercolor pieces when she was still um, more in the textile mode. Like this is done earlier too, but this is, um, uh, once again, like the ones there, this is um, ribbons and pieces of fabric, but also pieces of her watercolors cut up. What I have back at my studio is a whole box full of watercolors that are partly cut up into strips and pieces cut out of them that were all parts in the making. Like this is a watercolor with watercolor pieces, another painting which she ripped up or cut and collaged on top. She stopped with the embroideries and stuff as much as um, her hands became more arthritic and she couldn't do the stitching and you know, they, they hurt too much. So she didn't do as much of, that's one of the reasons she discontinued that. I think she loved that, but mm -hmm. it became too difficult. Yeah, I gotta admit that I, really enjoy her textures. So many layers on those paintings. She would you know, paint things on, and then collage things and then paint more and then scrape away and then add something to it. Mm -hmm. And this mask actually was done in, her and I um, together did, did a, um, chill, a student art group when, we, when our kids were at Brandywine High School. We ran a group called Arts Quest. We arranged to have the students visit different artist studios and do workshops with them. And one was Kitty Wittick, um, and she did a ceramics mask workshop with the children. And, and her and I got to do a mask, and that's the one that she did in the workshop. Oh, great. Okay, now this is all going to be auctioned off uh, as yes. much as... And, and who's, um, where's the, where's the uh, money going to It's going to the this? Ovarian Cancer Research Fund in New York City. Um, I don't know the address off the top of my head, but Elizabeth Howard is the director there, and she's very excited about that. This we have we have all this stuff up on a website where you can bid just like on eBay. <laughs> I have this techie web guy that works for me that amazed me that he can do it, you know, but he did. Um, and it's all we have a link to the Ovarian Cancer Research Fund site, and and they have a, our little blurb about our auction on their home page. So we're you know getting some interest there. We sent one of the paintings. They had a they had their Madeline Kahn Laugh with Madeline or something night. Mm -hmm. Um, which is a charity event. Mm -hmm. That was last week. And we sent them one of the paintings in advance, which they auctioned off there. But I didn't hear how much they got for it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But anything anyone buys, I mean, all of the funds go back to the Ovarian Cancer Research Fund, and they'll get a letter from them. It's a donation. Of, like, you know, Peg and Glenn aren't keeping any percentage, you know. No one's, you know, it's... it's oh, yeah, it's, it's totally, yeah. It, it's, it's totally benefit. Yeah. Yeah. So well, whenever you buy a painting for the 100% of it, you'll get a letter saying is, um, mm -hmm. you know, a donation. Okay. Well, very good. Thank you. Thanks. Ron. Thank you very much.